everybody welcome to a thrift this not that video we're gonna walk around the thrift store I'm going to show you some things that I picked up or maybe some things that I don't pick up and what we might try to look for instead so let's jump right off with this one I find this really pretty it's kind of got an art deco -y kind of motif and it is a California pottery I guess covered dish and California pottery used to be something that was pretty collectible. I mean, I suppose there are still people that collect California pottery stuff. They make all kinds of ceramics and cookie jars and things like that. Now, I'm not saying, as we go through these, I'm not saying that the things that are thrift this, not that, like the not items, there are still, there are still items there that have money to be made on them. But I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some things that might command a higher profit. Now there are a few California pottery things that still command a pretty good profit. So I thought I would show you those as well, like this soup tureen. But when I did the search, and even when I searched by sold's highest to lowest, there weren't quite as many. Now these are pretty cool, the corn cob holders. So keep an eye out for those because 45 bucks is nothing to sneeze at, definitely. But what I thought we could start looking for instead is Edith Heath. Now, when I started searching for Edith Heath stuff, oh my gosh. And some of these, look at these plates. I might not have even taken a second look at some of them because they're just kind of plain looking. But when you flip them over and you see that name Edith Heath on the bottom, or Heath, I'm going to show you the, the mark, the maker's mark for it. Look at these prices. This is something that I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for. So here's the mark on the bottom. It says Heath, and it looks like, mm, I can't tell what that little mark is underneath that. Uh, the word but look this looks like just a plain white plate normally I scan right over those I look for things that catch my eye but now I'm gonna really stop and look at the bottom of these it just takes a second to flip things over and I'm gonna start keeping my eyes open for Heath on the bottom if you've got another item similar to this that you think we should keep our eyes open for then let me know down in the comments section I like to try to find at least one thing in different sections that I can be on the lookout for. So anytime that I can add to that list, it really helps me up my game. So when I searched for this California pottery, I saw the Heath items there and I thought, oh, let me take a look at those. So every time you search, try to find something, let's say it's a, it's a dud, try to find something in the same realm or in the same section, like say ceramics, that instead of looking for this, we're gonna look for, for this other thing instead. Let's see what we see here. That caught my eye. <laughs> it is an Opal House item, which I believe that's a Target brand, right? Opal House. Uh, I wanted to look, maybe I should have looked up other Opal House things because they're pretty cute and there might be some of the items that maybe have a, a collector's base. But I didn't do that for this video, now did I? Nope, I didn't. Let me know too if you see anything that you wish I would have stopped and taken a closer look at or hollered at me for, for not getting. I kind of regret not picking this up. It was four bucks, but it was really, I kind of liked it. And now I'm thinking, oh darn, I didn't get it. Oh well, the, this is at the Goodwill. And so you'll notice that some of the prices, like there are things that if it had been a buck or maybe something from a garage sale that was a buck or two, I might've picked up, but, but some of the things at this Goodwill you know, that I would pay a dollar for might end up being like seven or eight dollars or more. All right, you guys know I love picking up trivets. There's a hat pin. Uh, it was broken, but anyway. So here is this trivet. It's this Asian, maybe Chinese character, and it hangs and it's a trivet. I like picking up trivets, but I'm trying to be smart about the ones I pick up. Now, once again, I'm not saying that these would have been a terrible buy. I didn't see prices on them either. And I know my Goodwill, they'll send it to the back and I'll be standing there for 20 minutes waiting for them to put a price on it. So I looked up Chinese character trivets uh, and Asian character trivets. And now again, there are some decent prices on some of these. I saw that the ones with the dragons rather than the characters seem to do better. Uh, dragons, Chinese dragons are very collectible. So that's something to remember. And again, these would have been, you know, a decent price, 25 bucks for those three. 
but I also want to make sure that I am on the lookout for something else. So I found this brand called Griswold. You guys may be familiar. They make more than just trivets, but look at this. Griswold Star Trivet, $60. This is sold. And then here are some others. Again, a couple more. That one sold for, now the $39, you can see that it was an auction. The other buy it now was 60. That's why I don't always go off auction prices. But I thought, let's take a look at some other Griswold items and we'll take a look at the maker's mark as well. So as you can see, not only trivets, but different kinds of cast iron or metal pots, pans, and there's not really any solidifying commonality other than they're all metal, maybe cast iron. Uh, but I thought, let's take a look at the maker's mark so that when you see it, you'll know it. So this is, it just says Griswold Trivet on the back. So pretty easy, but you can see, you kind of have to look for it. It's not just stand out-ish. Same thing here, the Griswold, I can't read the rest of it, but I think that gives you an idea. So when you're looking at metal things like that, kind of look around the edges, it'll be imprinted into the metal. I'm definitely putting that on my bolo list. All right, moving on. I'm going towards, look at my nail in the picture. <laughs> I'm going towards the shoes. Now shoes are not my main wheelhouse, but there are things that I tend to look for. I look for Doc Martens and generally anything else that just looks like it's high quality, well-made. I was looking at these boots because they look like they were pretty nice leather boots. If you've got brands that you are really into picking up, then leave a comment down below so that we can get to know some other brands as well. But look at the price. Okay, they're cute. They look like they're in pretty good condition. But again, I still have some shoes in my workroom that I still haven't listed. So I decide against getting those shoes. Ah, okay, next up, I get drawn to, you know, I love Harry Potter. And so here we had a really fun print, Harry Potter pajama top. And as much as I love Harry Potter and really fun, funky pajamas or things that have great patterns, now Harry Potter is flooded. I mean, there's so much, I mean, definitely there's still stuff that can sell that's Harry Potter related, or you can just send it to me, friend mail, I love it. <laughs> uh, but rather than picking up Harry Potter pajamas, I thought, Let's look at Olivia Von Hale because Olivia Von Hale, look at those prices, y'all. There Now, not all of her stuff has a really fun, funky pattern, but enough of it does that it will catch your eye. So again, so the, they're very big, bold patterns. There are some that are a little more understated, but if you can find some, you know, if it's gonna catch your eye, it's got like zebras or sharks on it. And then we'll take a look at the, the maker's mark or her tag so that you can get an idea of her, her uh, tag. So if you see her tag. So here are the zebra pajamas. Here's another pair in green. I like that green. So, uh, and also this brand also has other clothes, other items as well. So it's just another brand to kind of keep in your, in the back of your mind, Olivia Von Hale. Uh, why do they have the Vaughn, like Diane Von Furstenberg, Olivia Von Hale, here's the tag, Olivia Von Hale. Uh, and I know it seems like, well, I'm not gonna find something like that. You never know. I was in a thrift store down on Galveston, which is not like Galveston Island. It's, you know, anyway. And I found a Diane Von Furstenberg dress there in their, in their nightgown section. It was a, a really cool wrap dress. Yeah, so definitely take a look around. And, and being that, being having little, if I can talk, having said that, if you're a clothing seller and you're not looking over in the, the nightgown area, you might consider it because that's where I, they, they put a Von, Diane Von Furstenberg dress. It was in the pajama section. I think my mind is like wanting to learn more about shoes because I see them, I see they're pretty and I just don't know enough, but I always like to stop and look. All right, now we're diving into the purses and wallets so what do we see here looks like a bucket purse but look at the bottom that's not leather it's gonna be like 
it doesn't look very good quality. So I look, even if I don't know the brands and stuff, I look for ones that look like they're quality or ones that have kind of a unique look to them like this one. I liked that pattern on it, but goodness knows I have too many purses as it is. All right, and then straw purses. I used to, I, I'm not a fan of straw purses, but there is money in straw purses. So this is a little straw purse. There was no tag on it, but another brand that, that has straw purses out there is Simply Vera. And so instead of buying like a Simply Vera or kind of like store brand uh, straw purse, so here's a couple of hers. Again, there's money to be made if you bought it, you know, at the bins or for a buck. But this is a brand that I have sold two purses and a hat, Eric Javits. They are really nice quality straw handbags and purses, bags, and they also make straw hats. So if you see Eric Javits, then it's definitely worth looking into picking up because the prices can go, I mean, from in the 60s up into, I mean, I'm sure there's some that are lower than that, but up into the hundreds, multiple hundreds. So here's one I just grabbed that was in kind of the mid range. And then there is the tag Eric Javits. Again, the straw hats that Eric Javits makes also sell really, really well. So keep that brand in your bolo list peeps. Now I like to spend, especially when they're full, I like to spend a lot of time in this section with the wallets and the handbags and little cosmetic bags. Cause you can usually find like this looked pretty interesting, but it ended up having quite a bit of wear. It looked okay. Well, now I'm not seeing the wear for whatever reason I decide not to get that. Or maybe I put it in my basket and <laughs> look it up. There's a, a travel bag of Mal from Malta, I guess. <laughs> and what have we here? I, I open it up, look inside, but I don't get it. All right, so here's another one. This one looked promising. Uh, and this is Adrian. I'm going to butcher the last name. But hang on, I'm going to wait for it to pop up. Uh, Vitadini. And again, this is still a brand that can sell for a good profit, depending on your price point coming in. But this one also has a wide range. So some were selling really super low, some were selling up higher. This brand, Loungefly, I've talked about a couple times. I personally love, I have Loungefly wallets and purses, and they are such fun patterns. They are working with Disney and Marvel. So a lot of their stuff has Disney or Marvel uh, characters on them. The ones I have are the Captain Marvel, I have Guardians of the Galaxy, but as you can see, all kinds of Disney characters. Uh, I've even sold some that, that weren't character-based, but just kind of look like vintage tattoos. They were pretty, they're pretty cool looking and they're very distinctive. So Loungefly, again, wallets, they make purses, they make backpacks. They are definitely eye-catching. So if you see them, then take a close look at at them because they can bring a good profit y'all this one I kind of liked but it ended up being I can't see the brand now not one that I wanted to get I look at these patent leather purses because sometimes they're vintage this is Alfani which is not a vintage brand sometimes they're you know like you might see one that says made in Hong Kong those that are more vintage I think would probably do a bit better it's been a little while since I've sold one of those though, honestly, but just keep that in, in mind. If you see one that says made in Hong Kong, uh, take a sec to look it up because it could be worth worthwhile. Now then, digging over here, I liked that little purse. That was cute. Fuzzy, no brand, no maker's mark that I could see. And what else have we got? If you see me passing stuff up, I love it. I love it. I love it when people tell me in the chat or in the comments, hey, you totally put that to the side. I'm screaming at you through the, <laughs> through the screen because that's another way that I can learn. It's giving back, y'all. It's just giving back. And I, this little purse caught my eye. I kind of feel like, well, now you can see there's some beads missing on, the, on it down here. But if it didn't, I believe this is a Charming Charlie bag. Let's see, uh, what does it say? Is that Charlie? Charming Charlie, if I can get the words out. Yeah, I feel like even though it was a Charming Charlie bag, if it wasn't missing some stones, it might've still been a good pickup because it was, you know, a nice little evening purse. It looked nice. 
Another thing I like to look at is if I find a really nice leather wallet. Maybe I don't know the brand, but oh, this is a really cute one. This little carpet bag. I, I'm, maybe I should have still gotten it. Um, but they wanted eight bucks for it. Okay, y'all, I'm cheap. <laughs> I was like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm trying to stay within a budget when I'm thrifting. Have to, or else we could just go hog wild and just buy the whole thrift store. So I try not to buy anything that, I mean, unless it, I, this caught my eye too. It's REI. I'd never seen like a little REI wallet. Look at that camera work. I thought I edited all that nonsense out. Nope. That REI wallet, I did end up looking up when I was at the store. See, it's going in the cart, but it wasn't worth as much. But as I was saying, if you find a bag or a wallet that looks like really thick leather, even if you don't know the name, if it says like made in Italy, made in Mexico, made in wherever, just look it up and see, it doesn't hurt, it does not hurt. So in a second here, I'm gonna find another purse that does say, you know, made in Italy, but it's not a very good, uh, I, I contemplated this clear one because I know some places like concert venues, some places require clear bags we went to a concert and you, if you carried a bag in it, it had to be clear. So I'm like, ooh, maybe I should have gotten that after all. So this one caught my eye too, but again, nope. See, I'm going in for the straw bag. I wanna see, a lot of times you can tell just by the handle too, if it's uh, you know peeling or looks kinda of messed up. Usually really good quality bags, the handles are gonna be nicely stitched and they're going to just, hold up over time. So this is the one I was like, oh, this looks like it might be promising. But I looked up the brand and it really wasn't doing that great. However, it's purple and people like purple. So, and there, as you can, you, you can see, there's not a ton of purple bags there. So it might've been okay just because of the color. Let me know what you think. Should I have gotten it or not? Not in it. No, you can't make that work, Margaret. It's not going to work. Vera Bradley, I know some people holler at me, you passed the Vera Bradley. Sometimes I do because sometimes the, the thrift stores have the prices way, way jacked up on them. I liked that bag, that was cute. Maybe I should have looked it up, but I didn't. It has that adjustable strap on the shoulder. You can make it a crossbody. I think it was looking for me though. And then this messenger bag was pretty cool too. I don't know that brand. Somebody's flight stuff is in it. Maybe I should have looked just for that to see what else is hidden in here still? But yeah, that's a pretty cool bag. So maybe, maybe that's one I should have looked up as well. We all do that. We all like have things that we pass up or things we don't know about or just don't have a desire to sell. And that's okay because that makes, makes more for other people. This is a nice little purse, but it looks like it was mm, not going to be a big profit type purse and then here I am I'm looking at this straw hat that one says cold water creek I was looking to see because Eric Javits straw hats can kind of look like that so it's worth uh, taking a peek at next we're going down the blanket and fabric aisle I am always on the lookout for homemade quilts always but I also like to look at afghans and like knitted or crochet <laughs> there's the minions so that's going to be my next uh, tip as far as crochet and knitted blankets so instead of finding ones that one they need to look like they're really nicely made not holy and kind of falling apart and kind of dingy looking well dingy you can deal with but Instead of ho-hum blankets, I was like, how do I describe that? Where they're just kind of like, blah, I mean, the colors are okay. They look like maybe they just use whatever yarn they had in their scrap bag. Um, this one's actually kind of nice. Uh, but instead of grabbing ones, I mean, again, there's still profit to be made depending on how much you paid for it. But instead of that, like, and here's another, that's just kind of like a, you know, a little crib blanket or a little throw. Start looking for ones I put on here size, looking for size, looking for color, and looking for pattern. So the bigger it is generally, now these ones, there's, there's some that come that are even more. The bigger that it is, the, the more cat eye catching the colors are, or the cooler the pattern. 
I mean, look at that, at that fringed afghan up there. So some of these, I mean, those granny squares are really pretty. There's another granny square one coming up that sells for even more. But like if you find one that's a king size and it's got really cool patterns, really cool colors, it's definitely going to be a good pickup. So these are on the lower end of what you could get, but take a look at these. So here we've got some that have got almost like three-dimensional granny squares. I don't know if they're called granny squares when they're like that anymore, but I think they are. And just really bright popping colors. Those are the ones you really want to keep your eyes out for. So again, size, is it big? And color, is it, does it have bright, bright colors? These are baby ones. So I just wanted to show you the comparison. Maybe it's got bright colors, but it's like a, a crib blanket. So that, that usually will drop the price down a little bit. But again, there's always exceptions. Worth checking it out. Size, color, and then does it have a cool, cool pattern? Because that's going to matter. All right, and if you want to disagree or say, oh, don't forget this, leave a comment because there's always stuff I forget. There's always, you know, there's always more information to be had. Let's have it all. All right, what am I doing? What have I decided? Am I going this way? We're gonna have a tilted camera looking down into the cart. So when I go through this section, I'm frequently looking for placemats or napkins. Brands that I like to look for are like Pottery Barn because there's a, a collector base for Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel, higher end like stores like that. Now, what else am I looking for here? What do you look for in this section? Do you buy placemats and tablecloths and things like that or no? Pillowcases. Aprons are another thing that are usually in this area. I don't see any today, but aprons can be a really fun pickup as well. Toilet, used toilet seat covers. I mean, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want that, I ask you. So now, I would start going down the toy aisle, but then I noticed they have all of the carts out. So I decided, oh, you know what? Let's go down and look at all the, the items they have down at the end that they're restocking with because it's that FOMO, y'all, fear of missing out. Oh, if I don't go look through those now, somebody else, look, there is somebody down there. Or is she working? She may be working. Somebody else is going to come along and pull it out of there before I get to look. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, as we're talking, go down there and leave a comment. What is something that you always look for? Or if you're going to start looking in another section, find an item. You know, if it's a new section, do you find just like one brand to look for? One thing that will catch your eye. I challenge you to start expanding your prospects and reselling. You don't want to have all your all your eggs in one basket, as they say. So I learned that when I was just selling jewelry, you know, when it was time for me to start branching out, I was really glad I did. Those were kind of fun wine glasses. Yeah. Let's see if we see anything else down here. I'm still trying to learn a bit about lamps, but I always end up keeping them, the ones that I find. All right, you guys, if you have not already, go down there and hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified when I put out new videos. And go follow me over on Instagram. If you like videos like this, then, then definitely subscribe. And I will uh, talk to you very soon. Bye, everyone.